Hello everybody, Interiteri back again with another video. I'm at work guys, like you're seeing on my, on my outfit and I have some break here. So I was thinking with myself, why not do a video? Why not talk about the big passion of mine, which is of course tennis, like you all guys know by, by now. So, and I, I was thinking which topic we, we, do I want to talk about? And I thought with myself, why not do a video about which of the my list of uh, the future Alpha Hanas of tennis. Uh, and I will mention seven uh, players that will be the tennis, the men's tennis Alpha Hanas in the future. I will start with my, with my number seven, with the uh, player who I believe will be uh, the least Alpha Han of, the, of uh, men's tennis in the future. And my number one player who, who, who I believe will be the biggest Alpha Han of men's tennis in the future. And all these seven players I will mention, my friends, I believe all of them will win Grand Slams in the future. So, th this is the, it is the reason why I have chosen these seven players. Alright guys, let's not waste any time and let's get into it. On, on my number seven place, I have Dominic Thiem. Some of you maybe think, why do I have him as low as seven? Even though that he has, he is the highest ranked of all these seven players that I will mention. He is world number four, I believe. But he is the oldest of all these players as well. He is 26 years old, guys. So he's not, he's, he, he isn't having the time on his side. Yeah, 26 is not crazy old, but he's not crazy young either. So I have Dominic Thiem. In, on my number seven place, I believe he will win Grand Slams. His biggest chances are on slow surfaces, even though that he has improved on fast surfaces, like we saw in London, where, where he defeated both Djokovic and Federer, the two greatest, best players, the uh, indoor players of all time, in, in my opinion, Djokovic and Federer, and he defeated both of them there, and he went to the final and took Stefano Tsitsipas, the champion there, to a three set. But I believe that Dominic Thiem's biggest chances to win Grand Slams is French Open and US Open. And I would be surprised if Dominic Thiem retires without winning any Grand Slam uh, in, in his career. Uh, Dominic Thiem reminds me of playing, playing style like Rafa Nadal. He is, uh, it, it, Dominic, Dominic reminds me... Uh, he is a worse version of Rafa Nadal, a much worse version, uh, 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 of course. Uh, uh, he, his best surface is clay, like Rafa Nadal. He likes to play further behind the baseline, like Rafa Nadal. And he has a big top spin, like Rafa Nadal. Not as big as uh, top spin as, as Rafa Nadal, of course, but Dominic has a big, big top spin as well. So. Dominic has won five, uh, 16 titles all in all in his career. He has won five, title, five titles 2019. He has won as many titles 2019 as Novak Djokovic. Those, the, those two players are, are the players that has won most titles in 2019. And Dominic has won his first ever uh, Master 1000 title as well this year, early this year, when he defeated Roger Federer in Indian Wells in that final. All right, we go, we, we go on, guys. On my number six place, I have... Alexander Sasha Zverev. Yeah, maybe maybe some of you uh, uh, are a little surprised. I don't know that I have higher that I have him higher than Dominic Team. But guys, he's younger than Dominic Team. He's four years younger. He's 22 years old of age. He actually has won more big titles than Dominic Team. He has actually he, he he has he actually won most big titles of all these players that I will mention. The, uh, Alexander Sasha Zverev has won uh, four big titles, three most 2000 titles, and uh, one uh, ATP Tour Finals title. Uh, so, and he has won 11 titles all in all, even though that, even though that Alexander Sasha Zverev has won a bad year this year, he has only won, won one title this year, but we cannot, I believe that Alexander, Alexander Sasha Zverev will win a Grand Slam title or two or three before he retires. I would be extremely surprised if a player like Alexander Sasha Zverev never wins a, a Grand Slam title. He has some weaknesses. His weakness is his second serve and his forehand, in my opinion, and his movement. These three weaknesses he has. He has to improve these three weaknesses. Uh, he has a great backhand, he has a devastating serve, and he can do a lot of, lot of damage with his big serve. When Alexander Sasha Zverev's serve is 
on fire, it is impossible to break him. Literally speaking, it is impossible to break him. But for, for him to get even more, even better, he has to improve his forehand, he has to improve his second serve, and he has to be a better mover on the court, and he has to even be, uh, sometimes he can be too passive on the court. He needs to be more offensive. He, he reminds me a little of Andy Murray. Andy Murray used to be very passive when he was in, in his prime, and Alexander Sasha Zverev, he reminds me in like Andy Murray in that way. So, these four things he has to improve. Forehand, uh, second serve movement, and be more offensive on court. All right, I have, Ale Alexander Zverev is at the moment world number six, I believe, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. No, I'm sorry, world number seven. Yeah, world number seven. So, all right, we go on. On my number six place, I have uh, Daniel Medvedev. Yes, uh, I'm sorry, on, on my number five place. On my, on my number five place, I have Daniel Medvedev, the ball machine from Russia, who has won four titles this year, who has won seven titles all in all in, in his career, three last year, four this year. He has won two big titles this year, two most of thousand titles, and has played his first ever Grand Slam final in US Open and took Rafa Nadal to a fifth set there and even was a fifth and even was a, a break up in that fifth set, but could not. Uh, seal the victory and Rafa Nadal turned that match around. He is world number five, I, I believe, at the moment. He is 23 years old of age. He is the oldest player in this list after, uh, after Dominic Thiem. I believe that uh, uh, Daniel Medvedev, he will win Grand Slams before he retires. I believe that he, I will, I will be surprised if he never won a Grand Slam title when Daniel Medvedev calls it a day. But I can't have I can't give I can't have him higher than on my number five place because, like I said, he's 23 years old of age. He is the oldest player in this list after Dominic Team. He will be 24 in February, and uh, he will not have easy times as older as he gets. And he's a big, tall guy. I think injury will haunt him when he gets even older because he has a big. He's a tall guy and he plays a lot of tournaments as well, but I think he will play less tournaments in the future. He has to. Uh, so, but uh, I, I have him on my fifth place. He's a ball machine. He's a grinder from the baseline. It is almost impossible to hit, through, to hit through him. And he doesn't make a lot of unforced errors, but he has some weaknesses. His weakness is his forehand, in my opinion. And he also can be sometimes too passive, like Alexander Sasha Zverev. He's a, he's a good offense. He can play offensive tennis, he can play defensive tennis, but sometimes Dana Medvedev that he can play he can be too too passive on the court. But all in all, he's a pretty, pretty complete player, besides that he has to improve his forehand. His backhand is much more solid, it's much more sharp than his forehand, in my opinion. And he's really good at the net. He has a huge serve as well. And he's a pretty good mover, decent mover, not a super great mover, but uh, comparing that he's a big, big guy, he moves pretty good, in my opinion. All right, on my fourth place, I have Denis Shapovalov. A 20 years old guy from Canada, has a huge ground strokes, both with, both with his forehand and his backhand, has a huge serve when he lands his first serve, because it doesn't, it is not always that the case. Sometimes he can be under 50% with his serve. That is, that has been an issue in, in the past for, for the hard hitting Canadian Denis Shapovalov. And, uh, and his weakness is his returns, even though he has improved the returns. But when I saw him one year ago or something like that, I, I, I was not impressed with Denis Shapovalov's returns. He could, he could, uh, back, back one year ago, he could barely make any returns back in play. But he has improved his returns. He won his first ever title two, three. Oh, three, four weeks ago in Stockholm, a little 250 class tournament. He won that first title of, of him and that will definitely not be his last. But he has huge potential. He's a shot maker. And in the past, he used to do a lot of unforced errors, but he has cut on those unforced errors down as well. And, uh, and he's young. He has time on his side. He's only 20 years old. Uh, he, he's really super talented and I would be extremely surprised if Denis Shapovalov never won a Grand Slam title when he calls it a day. So I truly believe he will win Grand Slam titles in the future. He he played his biggest final uh, 
three, four weeks ago in the Master 1000, in the Master 1000 final in Paris, I lost to Djokovic there. Not a shame to lose to an uh, icon like, like that. So, but we will see even greater, greater results from him in the future. And I think he will win Grand Slams in the future. Denis Shapovalov, the 20 years old guy from Canada. On my number third place, I have Yannick Sinner. This is and Denis Shapovalov at the moment is, I believe, world number 15. That is his highest ranking that he has ever had in, in his career. All right. On my number fourth place, I have Yannick Sinner. This is the youngest guy on this list. He, he has the worst ranking of these seven players on this list, which is not any surprise because, because he's the youngest. He is, I believe, at the moment, Yannick Sinner, from, uh, a super talented player from Italy. He is at the moment at the 78th place in the world. He has never won an ATP title in his career. He has won a couple of challenges, two titles this year. But I really like his game. He reminds me of Novak Djokovic. He has strengths like Novak Djokovic. He has a great, great backhand. He has great returns. His returns are really, really good, even though that he is so young. I saw him in the in, in that tournament that he won on the uh, Next Gen Finals when he, when he defeated... Uh, Alex Diminaur, a pretty good Australian guy in straight sets. I was so impressed from him. He has huge potential, this guy, this Italian super talented guy. He, when he hits this, his shots, he, he, he does it with no, with, it seems like he, he with no uh, effort. He, his technique is so real, is so good. But when the ball touches his record, the ball really penetrates the court in really great speed. So, he, especially from his backhand side, even his forehand is really good, but in my opinion, his backhand is even better. I really like his effortless technique. I really like his, his uh, returns. Like I said, he reminds me of Novak Djokovic with great returns and great backhand and a really, really good forehand as well. And he has a great serve as well. He's pretty tall. I think he's 6'1 or something. He's, I think that he's uh, a similar tall as Novak Djokovic as well. So this guy from Italy, I, I have huge expectation on him. I truly believe he will win Grand Slams in the future. That is my feeling. That, that, that is how I feel. All right, we go on. On my number second place, I have Felix Ali Asime. A 19-year-old guy. He's the youngest player of after Yannick Sin Sinner in this list. He's 19 years old from Canada. He has huge ground strokes. He has a huge serve. He has a huge forehand. His backhand is a weakness. He needs to improve his backhand. But if he improves his backhand, which he will do, he has time on his side, he will be a really, really great player. He's a great player already. I believe he's at the moment 21 in the world. He had a, he 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 did a uh, Master 1000 semifinal seven six seven eight months ago. Lost to uh, John Isner. There was a breakup both in the first set and the second set. Has he has played a couple of ATP Tour finals this year, but never won an ATP Tour, ATP Tour title yet. But he will do for sure. I have big expectation on Felix Aliasime. He has to improve his forehand. I'm sorry, his backhand, and he has to improve his second serve, exactly like Alexander Sasha Zverev. He sometimes can do too many uh, double faults, and he can sometimes be a unforced error prone, exactly like Denis Shapovalov as well, uh, Felix Aliasime. But he has huge potential, he, ha he is young, and I have big expectation that he will win Grand Slam titles in the future, Felix Aliasime, and I have him on my, on my number second place. On my number first place, no surprise, you all know who, it is, who, who will be by now, it is the young Greek super talented guy, Stefanos Tsitsipas, who plays a, have, who has a similar tennis style like Roger Federer. I really enjoy watching Stefanos Tsitsipas on the tennis court. He plays so beautiful tennis. He really has everything. He has forehand, he has backhand, he has serve. He's good from the baseline. He's good at the net. He is a great mover, even though that he's, he's a really big guy. He's 6'5", I believe. But he's a superb mover to be that that big. He it 
is back and used to be his big weakness in the past. He has improved that shot. Oh my God, I was so impressed by him in, in that ATP Tour Finals tournament where he won. He barely missed any backhands after that first set. In the first set, I believe Stefano against the Dominic team did 10 unforced errors. In the second set, he did only one. In the third set, I believe he did only five unforced errors. All in all, Stefano did 16 unforced errors and 34 winners in that final match against Dominic team. And I was so impressed by his backhand. I have never seen hit uh, Stefano Tsitsipas hit his backhand that great like he did in that final against team last week. And I've never seen Stefano Tsitsipas return as good as he did in that final match against team. Because even though he defeated uh, Roger Federer in that semi-final, I was more impressed by, T by Stefanos in the final than I was in the semi-final. Because in the semi-finals, Roger Federer helped him, helped him win, uh, guys. Because Roger Federer was not good. We all know that Roger Federer was a disaster. And Stefanos Tsitsipas, he did, I believe, in that Roger Federer match, 27 winners, 27 unforced I mean, and only 20 winners. But against team he play, that was his best that that was Stefano's best match I have ever seen he did 34 winners and only 16 unforced errors his back end was uh, really superior his for his returns was superior his movements on the court Dominic team he tried everything he he threw everything but it was not easy for Dominic team to hit through Stefano Tsitsipas because he is such a great mover as well he really has everything this guy and he is good in the head as well. He has a really great mindset. Why? Because when he played against Rafael Nadal in that third group state match, he, he, he didn't have anything to play for. He was already qualified for the semifinals. But he played like his life was on the line, my dear God. He played almost three hours against Rafael Nadal and took Rafa to a third set there. And lost in the end, but he didn't. He he didn't need to play that hard, but he did. Why? Because because he has that winner mentality in his head. He hates to lose, and he even said that before that match, "I will give my all, even though that I have nothing to play for." And he did. That was so so fun to see, really. And that is a proof to me that he, this guy, Stefano Tsitsipas, he hates to lose. He has that winner mentality in his head, no matter if the match. Uh, uh, is, is, no matter if he has not something to play for or not, he will give his all, really. So, Stefano Tsitsipas is on my number first place. He has everything. Like I said, forehand, backhand, returns, everything. My tennis friends all over the world. He has improved his backhand. He has improved his returns. So, I believe that of all these seven players, Stefano Tsitsipas will win most Grand Slam titles when all these seven players have retired. On my number 7th place, it is Dominic Thiem. On my 6th place, it is Alexander Sasha Zverev. On my, on my number 5th place, it is uh, 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 Daniel Medvedev. On my, on my number 4th place, it is Denis Shapovalov. On my number 3rd place, it is Yannick Sinner. On my number 2nd place, it is Felix Aliassime. On my number 1st uh, on place, it is uh, Stefanos Tsitsipas, who, who is at the moment world number 6, I believe because I, I, I forgot to mention that. He has won three titles this year has, and he has won one title last year. All in all, Stefano Tsitsipas has won four titles in his career and he won his biggest title last week in London. And f I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guarantee you that you guys that it will definitely not be his last big title in Stefano Tsitsipas' career. Mark my words. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care and bye-bye.